Hello everyone, this is Mr. Kazi, and we're back here in my virtual studios in Humble, Texas, and I welcome you here today to learn about the periodic table. The periodic table is probably one of the most fascinating and most useful pieces of information in science. It is so important that I actually consider the periodic table the number two most important scientific discovery of all time, only a second to the discovery of the scientific method. All right, sit back, take some notes, and let's learn about the periodic table. The periodic table is the second most dis important discovery of all time, and it's the most important tool in your chemistry classroom. So get that periodic table down. The periodic table was based on the periodic law and the first periodic law that stated that the properties and characteristics of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic masses was developed by Dmitry Mendeleev and in about 1869-1870 he presented his ideas to the scientific community about how he saw patterns, repeating patterns in the different elements and how they could be arranged in a table or chart. And so Dmitry Mendeleev uh, gets credit. Now others would say that possibly Lothar Mayer um, should get some of the credit, but Dimitri beat him to the publishing, you might say, and, and so Dimitri Mendeleev uh, gets the credit. Now, with the addition of all the cool things with the electron, the proton, and the neutron, Henry Mosley realized that uh, there was more to the periodic law than just the atomic masses, and after uh, much work in the uh, laboratories of Rutherford, uh, Hen uh, Henry Mosley uh, realized that the properties and characteristics of the elements are periodic functions of the atomic number. And so today we realize that we don't arrange them according to their atomic masses, which worked fairly good with a few inconsistencies, but it worked fairly good. But in reality, it's the uh, atomic number, the protons, that determine what an element is. So Today, we arrange it according to atomic number. And, uh, you know, uh, the other part of the atomic mass is the neutrons, and that doesn't really affect what an element is. Periodic means to repeat at intervals, uh, days, weeks, months, years, and etc. are all periodic functions, and so they repeat themselves. A function is a relation in which one set depends on the other such as y equals 3x plus 15. And you remember that from algebra. Well, that's a function. And it's a function because y depends on what x equals. And the characteristics and the properties of the elements depend on the atomic number. And by catching on to that re repetitive pattern, as Mendeleev did, we've been able to organize our elements in such a way that not only do they match up in their atomic numbers, but today they also uh, match up in their characteristics, their properties. I mean, the characteristics of sodium is very similar to the characteristics of lithium or potassium. And they're all in that same family. And the same goes for uh, calcium, which is in the same family as magnesium and barium. And they all tend to have the same characteristics. They tend to react with the same things. They tend to not react with the same things. They tend to have the same kind of uh, reactive behavior uh, in the different... Uh, elements and that's just due to their uh, electron configurations, it's due to their valences, and it's due to their uh, way they bond or the characteristics of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic number. So it's important that we understand what the idea of periodic and function is. Well with that uh, about the periodic table, we realize then that the characteristics of the elements depend on the atomic number and repeat on certain intervals. And that's what makes the periodic table so useful. There are so many things we're going to use the periodic table for in the uh, coming lessons. As we learn about chemical uh, properties, as we learn about chemical reactions, as we learn about chemical names, as we learn about how to uh, determine chemical bonding. And even if you haven't already noticed, when you're doing oxidation numbers and Lewis death symbols, what do we use? The periodic table. The periodic table is the number one tool in chemistry and no other discipline has a tool so thorough and so awesome as the periodic table. Always have a periodic table with you or take the time to memorize it. I'd say just have a periodic table with you, 
Have it up on the wall. Keep one in your book. Keep one in your notebook. Just have a periodic table with you everywhere you go when you're doing chemistry. All right. Periods and series. The periods are the rows of the periodic table. So all the rows are the series, and there's seven rows, and we're going to learn the special meaning of those rows. The families or groups. Families are the columns of the periodic table. So the families are the columns, and the uh, series or the periods are the rows. And you want to make sure you just get that down and know the difference. On the periodic table, you have four things that you can learn from it in the simplest form. I mean, you might have a fancy college type periodic table, and that's great. There's going to be a lot of information on there, but I require my kids to kind of uh, learn a lot of the information that's also put on the periodic table. So I give my students just a regular periodic table. You can get a periodic table like this from, uh, I believe, mrkazi.com slash chemistry, and you can just download it as a PDF. If you don't have a simple one, you can uh, shoot me an email at, uh, where is that, Mr. Kazi, at mrkazi.com, and uh, I'll shoot you off a PDF of a nice uh, periodic table. But here's the things we can learn. We can learn the name, the symbol, the atomic mass, and the atomic number. And almost every periodic table has at least that basic information. Okay, let's move on. The energy levels. Here's a really cool thing. All of the seven rows correspond to an energy level of the periodic table. So not only is this periodic table adjusted for properties and things of that nature, it's also adjusted for the energy levels or the quantum mechanics. So let's go through that. Here's You've got your seven energy levels. And then you've got your S and P, D, and Fs. Okay, And there's the information you kind of need to know about these. The S and P are the representative elements. There's something to remember. The S and the P's are the representative. Those gray areas are representative elements. There's also another thing here I'd, I'd like to point out. Notice that hydrogen, okay, even though it's over in the S orbital area, because it only has one S orbital and one electron in that one S orbital, it has a configuration or a valence configuration like the alkali metals or the group one, but it doesn't really belong there. It belongs over in that dotted box. Okay, you see that dotted box? That's where hydrogen really belongs according to its properties. So according to its configuration, it belongs on the left-hand side, but according to its properties, it belongs on the left-hand side. And hydrogen is just a little weirdo, and we need to remember that. Here, let's learn the families. You've got alkali metals, the alkali earth metals, the noble gases, the halogens, the calcogens or oxygen family. Here's our metals. All the yellow are the metals. And most of the elements are metals. There's our nonmetals. The red, you notice that hydrogen is red because it is not a metal. There's our semi-metals or metalloids that kind of separate the metals from the nonmetals. And uh, I noticed that when a semi-metal is with a metal, it tends to be a non-metal or behave that way. And when a semi-metal is with a non-metal, it tends to act like a metal. And so I guess that's why they call them semi-metals. There's our transition metals, and they're the D orbitals. Our inner transition metals are the F orbitals. Most of those are radioactive. And do you have any questions? Remember now, the periodic table is your number one most important tool, and you need to get it out, learn it, have it with you, and start learning these little secrets about the periodic table. Okay? Don't forget to check out uh, www.mrkazi.com. You can see PowerPoint videos and much, much more, handouts, etc. You can also go to eZine Articles and find uh, several articles that I've put out about chemistry and the periodic table. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll say happy islands to you. Bye.